Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Kaylee. In today's video we are going to take a look at Jackie Kay's My Grandmother. So just before we get started with analysing the poem, um, I've actually created a resource for teaching or studying this poem. Um, it gives you some guided questions with a full answer key uh, to, to help guide your understanding and insight into this poem. Um, so you can see the, the, the website there is Teachers Pay Teachers and the link is in the description below. So be sure to go and get your hands on one of those. Okay, let's get into it. So, my grandmother. My grandmother is like Scottish pine, tall, straight-backed, proud and plentiful. A fine head of hair, greying now, tied up in a loose bun. Her face is ploughed land. Her eyes shine rough as amethysts. She wears a plaid shawl of our clang with the zeal of an Amazon. She is one of those women burnt in her croft rather than moved off the land. She comes from them, her snake skin. She speaks Gaelic mostly, English only when she has to, then it's blasphemy. My grandmother sits by the fire and swears, there'll be no darky baby in this house. My grandmother is a Scottish pine tall, straight-backed, proud and plentiful, her hair tied with pins in a ball of steel wool, her face is tight as ice and her eyes are amethysts. Okay, so let's consider some of the themes that we see in My Grandmother. Um, so several themes are explored within this poem, uh, the first one being family, we also see age being explored. Um, of course, we see racism. And finally, society. So let's go through each stanza doing a, a more in-depth analysis. So stanza one, let's first look at the title, My Grandmother. Um, so what's quite important to note is that actually this particular poem is separated from any collection within uh, Darling New and Selected Poems. It's actually placed right at the beginning of the anthology uh, before the adoption papers. So it almost reads as a prologue, I would say, um, to the collection and, and it introduces us to some of the key themes that, that Kay explores throughout the works and especially with regard to the poems that we will study. Um, that's why I always start um, my in-class teaching with this poem. So we're led to believe actually that this poem is going to be possibly quite a heartfelt, you know, reminiscent poem of, of a grandmother and perhaps quite a warm uh, sentiment towards her, especially with this my, uh, the possessive pronoun. However, um, it really, it contrasts the actual harsh reality of the content as we continue reading. Kay likes to do this. Um, quite often the titles can be quite ambiguous or uh, contrast very much with, with the content of, of what we're about to read. My grandmother is like a Scottish pine, is like Scottish pine. So here we've got a simile um, and we have to compare this to the refrain at the end, um, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Scottish pine, we get this idea of something that is very deep rooted and very traditional. However, we also get the impression that this is something that's very common. Okay, so pine trees, especially in the UK, very common to see them growing in the highlands, um, you know, on the hillsides. So it's interesting that these are quite, this is quite a common tree that, that's been used to represent the grandmother. So could this be used then to represent or reflect the wider society as well? just showing how common uh, the view of the grandmother is within Scotland. So we've got this tall, straight-backed, proud and plentiful. This is actually re repeated exactly in the refrain. Um, it seems very resolute and gives us this impression of somebody who is strong and sturdy, very much like the pine tree. So continuing with that simile and that imagery. Um, but as we see, it, it's, the, it's the same at the start and the end of the poem. So we see somebody who is unchanged. 
Her face is ploughed land, so very strong visual imagery here. Um, and of course, this is where we start to get the idea of the of the age of the grandmother. Um, but it could mean several different things. It could be interpreted in different ways, depending on the way you look at it. Of course, we see age, we associate it with knowledge and wisdom as people grow older and the knowledge that they acquire. However, we also get this idea of, or we are inclined to consider the own hardships that the grandmother has faced. Um, we usually get these kind of wrinkles um, from worrying and from stress throughout our lives. Um, so we see very two different uh, connotations behind this particular phrase. Her eyes shine rough. Um, so we look at the connotations of rough um, and just how, you know, the, being very much the opposite of smooth. Again, rough, tough times is coming through. Um, but amethyst, quite interestingly, were used by the Greeks and the Romans for meditative calm. Um, so we see somebody, once again, who's quite resolute in her ways and her thinking um, and very much set in her way. She doesn't want to change. So we continue with the rest of stanza one um, and we continue with this idea of kind of mythology with the Greeks. Um, so she wears a plaid shawl of our clang. So here we see the re-emphasis of her Scottish roots and pride through the wearing of the plaid shawl, which of course is very symbolic of Scotland, um, you know, men that wear the kilts, um, and we see of her clang, of our clang, um, but with the zeal of an Amazon. And this is where we get that Greek mythology again. Um, so the Amazon warriors, they were a race of women warriors, um, very, very passionate and strong, and, and they were fighters. Um, so so we, we get this impression that the grandmother is very much the same. She is one of those women burnt in her croft rather than moved off the land. Um, so you have to do some uh, digging around to find out some information about this particular event that happened in history. Um, this refers to the highland clearance um, and this is where people were forcibly removed from their from their homes in the highlands to make way um, for for sheep herding and for cattle to be raised there and so we actually see that the grandmother herself has faced discrimination as part of her clan she was forcibly removed from her land um, and i suppose that makes her later declaration more shocking because we tend to find people who have faced discrimination or are part of a mon minority would tend to perhaps stick together but she seems to carry on those traditional views and beliefs of scotland with regard to racism she comes from them, her snake skin. And I think comes from them is quite important here. It almost gets this, creates this idea that she was created from that. Um, and, and is it that her own views and the way that she acts has actually been very much derived from her own hardships? She speaks Gaelic mostly, English only when she has to, then it's blasphemy. So we know that Gaelic is obviously the traditional language of Scotland. So we get this idea that the grandmother is very determined to preserve and uphold her own cultural upbringing. Um, and this allows us to consider a really major theme of Kay's work. And it is, you know, one's own sense of belonging and our own identity, um, which is embedded throughout this poem and throughout the collection. And there's some very good AO5, which I'll introduce you to uh, at the end of the video to support that. Stanza two, we have this very short couplet. My grandmother sits by the fire and swears there'll be no darky baby in this house. This short, impactful stanza, it really, really does pack a punch. Um, and of course, we have this really sudden, yet almost built up Volta. We start to see that the tone of the poem is, is decreasing. The warmth of it is decreasing. Um, and then, you know, and we see this, 
this impactful statement accentuated by the use of italics, which is often what Kay uses um, when referencing another voice within the poem. We see a really poignant shift in tone um, where it very much reveals the darker side of the grandmother. But as I said, if we expand it and use the grandmother as a representation of the whole of society, um, then we could possibly be linking this to Kay's own experiences within society as a woman of colour. Not necessarily about her own relationship with her adoptive grandmother, but as society as a whole and how they've treated her or people like her. Then we move on to the, the final stanza, stanza three. So this is a refrain, um, which just means it is a, a repetition of, of a previous stanza. However, this one, we see an edited version of the first part of stanza one, and that's quite impactful because the changes create a sense of upset and, and hurt as we read it and we realise that the grandmother is very resolute and is not going to change. So we see two similes that have now become metaphors. So you'll remember at the start of stanza one, I said that, you know, this is a simile. Now the simile has become a metaphor. Again, given this idea of something that is resolute and that the grandmother is unchangeable. She is set in her ways. That is the way that she is. And, and no matter what, people try to say or try to influence her, her opinions are not going to change. Um, and finally, we've got her face is tight as ice. Um, and I think here we see that really cold contrast with the, the warmth of the grandmother's description at the start, or even looking at the title itself, we're led to believe it's going to be quite a warm depiction um, and, you know, happy memories of a grandmother. However, this has diminished, especially after the second stanza where we got that impactful statement. So let's briefly chat about the form, the speaker and some AO5 for this particular poem. So for the form, we have three stanzas of varying length. Of course, the first stanza is a very vivid description of the grandmother. And then stanzas to very short couplet is very direct and impactful as we see the darker side of the grandmother and as a wider message to society. And then the final stanza emphasises how resolute and unchanged the grandmother. And of course, we can extend this to society as well, just how unchanged they are. The speaker, there's no evidence that this is an autobiographical piece from Kay. However, with its wider message being about racism in society, of course, we can suggest that Kay has used personal experiences to influence the poem's content. Um, and there's some wonderful AO5 to support this. Um, that would be Jane Gray's The Woman with the Ibo Nose and Scottish Tongue. Um, this was written in 2007 and it has quite a, a, a large section on my grandmother, which is definitely worth a read um, and has a number of really useful uh, quotes you could use to support your, your ideas in your analysis. So guys, I really hope this video has helped you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more English videos, especially those linked to Jackie Kay. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.